to show the viewers the new police car, but I'm not sure if they're ready. Yes guys, now you read the YouTube title correctly, we have got a brand new police car and me and Owen are so excited to reveal it to you. Now the Focus ST is getting a little bit boring and of course as well, we couldn't actually modify the Lotus Evora. So around the corner over there is Owen sat in the all new police car that we're going to be not only modifying for the channel, making as car seen as possible, but also educating you guys as to exactly what you can and can't do on your modified car. This is going to be exciting and I cannot wait to show you exactly what we've got. Right, come on mate. Let's show the viewers what we've got. Honestly, I'm so excited about this. Such an upgrade on my car for sure. This is the all new 2016 Mark III Focus RS. Not your average police car. Right, Owen, you need to explain yourself, but I think it's about time you put your kit back on before everyone starts doubting that you're a real policeman. Okay. So I'm sure I speak on behalf of every single person watching this video. Why has Owen chosen the Mark III Focus RS? But Owen, before you show them around the car, I think it's about time you explain yourself, because what we've got planned is definitely a little bit different. Well, we've had the Lotus, and the Lotus is absolutely brilliant, but it's right at the top of its game, and there's nothing we can do to that to make it any better. So what we've done is we've got hold of this Mark III Focus RS, and we are going to modify it, doing all the things that you like doing, and we're going to show you how to do it safely and legally so that you can have, or you can see, a fully modified road legal car, and you can copy that on your own cars. And of course, and in Jack McNeil fashion, you are going to be deciding what mods I do to it, all right? Top comment of every video gets to decide what I do. So get creative think about what you'd like to see on our police mark III focus rs and let us know in the comments so one of the most striking things about our car is the color and that's unique to the mark III rs it's the signature color of nitrous blue and at the end of the video we're going to take it outside into the sun and we're going to show you how striking it is however it doesn't exactly scream police at the moment does it so let's wrap it let's make it look really different put your comments below give us your creative ideas what do you think we should have on the car be creative let us know what you think Let's go and have a look at the wheels. So our car already comes with the upgraded forged alloys and these were a really, really nice alloy. It also comes with the blue Brembo brake calipers. And again, that's a really, really nice thing to have on the car, but I'm a modified car enthusiast. So I want to change this. I want to make it look a little bit different. So what do you think we should do to the wheels? What wheels do you think we should have on it? What do you think we should do to the brakes? Because ultimately we're going to be upgrading the engine. We're going to make our car go faster. So we want to make it stop better as well. So give us your ideas wheels brakes tires give us all that what do you think comments below now i really like the front end of the mark 3 rs it's got a really aggressive look at the front with the grills and everything um, but i think we could go better i think we can put a splitter on it i think we could do something with the fog light covers i don't know maybe some bonnet vents again what do you think what do you reckon george maybe some custom headlights we could even go with zunsport yeah zunsport might get involved if we ask them nicely we might get some uh, custom headlights on it but again what do you think comments below when it comes to modifying the interior of your car naturally there are loads of customizable options but i'll tell you what i really do love those shell rs seats yeah well the seats were one thing that i was looking for when i went to look for the cars i really like them as well and i can see where you're going with this and no you're not having them for the st um, but yeah there are different options that we can do we can look at seats we can look at a uh, steering wheel, we can look at other things within the car and maybe even, I don't know, roll cage and K-brakes, what do you think? Sounds amazing to me, but I know they want to know how good does this car sound, so let's start her up. So one of the most common questions we get by far is about how do I make my exhaust sound better but do it legally? So we're going to show you exactly how you do that. Using this car, we're going to put a completely different system on it so it sounds much, much better, but it's also legal. But for now, George, start it up. Sport mode, one second, race mode. It does sound good, but I definitely think it needs an upgrade. This is a combination of things that the viewers have uh, suggested. I'm just going to take your chameleon tip off. No, you're not. You like that, do you, mate? Yeah, I like that, mate. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Oh my god. That looks amazing. It doesn't exactly scream police at the moment, does it? So let's wrap it.
Yes, yeah, so we've had the car since Monday. Um, came in and it had full PPF front car coverage. So it had bonnet, wings, bumper and seals and a bit of the pillars. Mm -hmm. We had to take all of that off obviously prior to wrapping. It's a bit of a struggle in itself to get that off really. It leaves all the glue and stuff behind. Um, but we're there now. So I got to look at the car. It's still, it's still a bit in pieces. This side's actually pretty much done, bar the seal. Um, door handles are being done upstairs now. Um, this, this side of the car's all done, all the lights out. Fat bumpers there, ready to go tomorrow. Spoilers off as well, it's upstairs. Roof's been done, it's a pretty nice touch. Hi right, Steve, you've got to check this out. What is it? It's a steering wheel cover, handbrake cover and gear knob cover. <laughs> nice. We'll have to stick this on when he's not looking and uh, test this reaction on Tuesday. So Owen's turned up to check out the car, but as you guys know, it's nowhere near finished yet. And although it looks fantastic, Owen, what do you think? Because that's what matters. I think it's going to look pretty cool. Excellent <laughs> suggestions from our viewers. And yeah, I think it's going to look, once it's finished, it's going to look uh, pretty unique. I think a lot of the comments were actually assuming that we weren't going to be listening to them, but we definitely have. Oh, and yeah. it definitely stands out and I can't yeah. wait to show them the final process. Yeah, so this is a combination of things that the viewers have uh, suggested. So we've not gone for one idea, we've gone for um, a variety of the ideas, put them all together and come up with what's going to go on the car and what's halfway there. So yeah, thank you to the viewers. I, I think it's going to look really quite cool when it's done. And it's booked in for its blue light fit as well. So the blue against everything else that's going on the car, uh, I think it's going to look pretty awesome when it's done. Oh, well, there's the front. So we've got to put the brake light in here. Would you like to do that piece? You've done all this. You're, you're getting pretty yeah, I mean, good. I did this all myself, clearly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've done, got all the work in. You've done a good little job there. Yeah. Now, as you can see, it's starting to come together now. All these reflectors are now in and naturally all the reversing sensors are gonna be put back in by Rapid Graphics later on. What you've heard from Owen in regards to the carbon and the satin black is not as far as we've gone with this car. The excitement has yet to come, so stay tuned. Well, there's kind of a method behind my madness. Um, I've gone for the carbon on the roof, obviously, because we can't have a full carbon roof. That would just be ridiculous. Um, so I think the carbon wrap on the roof just contrasts with the satin black on the rest of the wrap. Uh, likewise, on the bonnet, we could have gone for a full carbon bonnet, uh, how many people can actually afford the full carbon bonnet? And we want to be realistic in what we're doing. So we've gone for that wrap. We wanted the, the matte black anti-glare strip on the top as well. So that would have covered up half our genuine carbon bonnet. So there wasn't much point in doing that. I looked into bonnet vents and the only ones that I really wanted were from the Sierra Cosworth 4x4. Um, but there's an awful lot of work that would have to go into doing that with the structure of the bonnet and how they are actually fitted. So that was a whole load of work that really we didn't have time for. And you know, the money that would have had to have gone into that probably wasn't worth it and is outside most people's budgets. And we want to keep this realistic. They've done a good job, you can chill out. I've done an awesome job, yeah, it's really good. It's gonna look yeah. so much better on Tuesday though when we show them what's actually going on the car. Yeah. Not me. I'm just gonna take your chameleon tint off. No, you're not. Doing it on video. I, I got ice creams. All right. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah, you can move back a little bit. <laughs> right, I'll move back a little bit. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people have questioned where the money's coming from for this project, and quite rightly so. Um, it's not taxpayers' money. This whole project has been funded very kindly by Vision Zero Southwest. Now, Vision Zero Southwest are our road safety partnership, and that's all the agencies and everybody that has an interest in the road across Devon and Cornwall. Um, so that is where the money's come from. I did a lot of work applying for the grant to be able to do this. Um, and they've kindly lent me the money. And then all the companies that are getting involved in the project um, are really keen to get involved in that as well. So the actual modifications and everything aren't costing us as much as what they would do in the normal, uh, in the normal way. So we're doing it as cheap as possible um, and we're trying to make it a relatable project by not putting on you know, mods that are really, really expensive that most of you wouldn't be able to afford. Um, so, you know, we, we're trying to keep it as relatable as we possibly can. So, yeah, don't worry, it's not taxpayers' money that's going into this. Um, it is the money that's coming from grants from Vision Zero Southwest. So what's going on here then, boys? Yeah, uh, just removing this grill and it's stuck on with these stupid clips that uh, push on and don't come off very easily. <laughs> Didn't Sean lose those clips earlier when doing the other parts of the car?
So Steve, I'm assuming you build the graphics on the computer and then you send it all yeah. the way out there to Sean who prints them all off on the car. Is that right, mate? Yeah, mate. Now we're in the graphics area with the plotter. The machines that just run off and cut the luminous yellow. We've got the reflective blue to cut for the other side and then we're going to have the police graphics and put the rhino down. So this is our Sumo plotter. What he's doing now is cutting the blue reflective to go on the side of the car. So we're going to put the graphics on the passenger side of the vehicle now. This is the fluorescent yellow going down first. It's all in place. And what we're going to do is um, put it down. The magnets are holding it in place so it can't move anywhere. In the meantime, we've got Sean doing the blue on the front. How are we getting along, Sean? Yeah, good. A bit awkward using reflective vinyl around corners, but we'll make it work. So this is actually air release vinyl, so it's impossible to get any bubbles in it. it. Goes down nice and smooth. If you are changing the color of your car, then remember you have to tell the DVLA by sending off your V5. Now you've also got to tell the DVLA if you're changing the color by more than 50%, even if it's temporary like a wrap. But don't worry, it's free to do it. Also, don't forget to tell your insurance company about any changes that you make to your car from its factory specification. You happy with how it's turned out so far? I am. It's hard to see on the screen because obviously everything's on a 2D dimensional scale. Um, nothing really looks good on the computer, but once it starts coming together and going on the car, it just looks great. And I can see it in my head, it's just getting it on the vehicle. So Owen, this is the first time you've seen the police livery. What do you think? It's awesome. It's exactly what I had in mind when I scribbled all over the photo that I gave to Steve. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. I love it. That's yeah. my idea. It does my cool. idea that was. Yeah, we wrapped yeah. it though. We wrapped it. Yeah, Steve. Oh, wrapped you wrapped it. it. It's not yeah. bought like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kudos to you. That's good. Steve wrapped it. My idea. It yeah, might set off a train now. <laughs> Actually, Sean wrapped it, but I did that. Yeah. So this needs Vision Zero Southwest across the back. Then we've got police there, haven't we? And then yeah. I suppose we've got to put on a GCM sticker. We could hide it up here somewhere. Stick it under there. Yeah. Underneath the spoiler. Put it on right yeah. underneath on the corner of the window. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve, if we stick the last Tiger Stripe on there, like that, I'll hold that because it ain't going to stick on the plastic. But that should <laughs> nicely <laughs> cover up that stupid GCM logo you put on the fuel filler cap. Agreed? Are you having that George on there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a savage. So this is the faith that Steve has in me to put this on straight. He's even put on a bit of uh, sticky tape so that I don't mess it up. Straight-ish, isn't it? Let's have a look. Move your hands out of the way. Moment of truth. This is where I pull off the tiger stripe. Look at that. Are you happy with that? Look at that. <laughs> There's no going back now, is there? It's on. Now, guys, early on in the video, we told you we were going to be fitting the pink handbrake gear knob and steering wheel cover and of course Steve-O's in on it. I think it suits his personality properly and also it signifies the fact that the RS is definitely slower than my ST like despite that. the fact that it's never seen the track. You like that do you mate? Yeah I like that mate. Yeah, <laughs> yes mate. Funnily enough those dice I ordered them off Amazon and they said pink. They look great. Yeah they're definitely not pink but either way Owen's gonna love it. So it's Saturday it's the last and final day for the build on the RS wrap George and the boys have been here all day. I've just got here after work. We're going to show you the wrap. I'm going to go and look at it now. I haven't seen it in its finished state. I know there's a couple of little logos to go on, but let's go and have a look. George, what have you two done? I knew you couldn't be trusted. Look, fluffy steering wheel. All it needs now is Owen and George sunstrip. That's a joke. Don't do that. Really? It's me driving, not you. Sam, <laughs> break the gear stick one as well. Yeah, I, I don't think I can be driving that. Let's have a look around the back. Right. You're not seeing this, stay there. Let's get it outside. Let's show them what the back looks like because that looks awesome. Right, Steve-O, this is the final moment. Are you ready? I'm ready, are you ready? Yeah, damn right I'm ready. Oh my God, that looks amazing. I'm really excited to get this thing outside and see what it actually looks like. <laughs> right, Steve, come on in. Let's show the viewers the car. So, how do you think it went? I'm really happy with it. I think it works really well. The colours work, satin black's a nice touch and the tiger stripes set it off.
so I didn't do too bad with the design. <laughs> I like it, mate. I like it. Excellent. But that's down to the viewers because we took the viewers' ideas and we put them all together to <clears throat> make this one wrap. But there's still a few things to go on it, isn't there? We've got space down here for more of the sponsors that are getting involved in the uh, in the project. But come and let's have a look at the back because the viewers haven't actually seen the back yet. So my favourite bit on this is obviously um, the badge there. <laughs> that's the bit I did. <laughs> that's the best bit on the whole car, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But no, the back of it, you know, it just continues that tiger striped theme, um, but with the traditional colours that would be on the back of the police car. So I think it works really, really well as well. And all this, uh, the orange, the red and the blue is all reflective, so it will shine up at night. So when we've got the blue lights on it as well, which it'll have next week, it's, everything's going to come together and I think it's going to look awesome. But let's go and have a look at the front. So we've come around to the front of the car and it's exactly how I envisaged it. It's stealthy at the front and then you've got the exciting colours going up the side as well. It looks absolutely phenomenal. And Steve, thank you so much for everything that you've done on it. No, you're welcome, mate. It's been a great opportunity, so thanks for giving it to us. I know that you've worked really long hours on it into the night as well, so I hope I haven't been too demanding and too much of a pain, but thank no, you so fun, much mate. for everything you've done. It's been fantastic. Thank it you. looks absolutely great. Just over two weeks ago, you would have seen our Focus RS Mark III down at Rapid Graphics getting its amazing police livery installed. Now, in the meantime, Owen has actually had the RS down at Halls Electrical getting the blue lights fitted, haven't you? I have. And you weren't able to actually film that because otherwise we would have had some content to show them. But what's the reason behind that one? Yeah, the reason behind that is that also in the garage were some other vehicles that we didn't want to go out on film that are owned by other departments. So for obvious reasons, we can't put those vehicles out on social media. So sadly, we couldn't film the actual install of the lights. Now, the lights are actually installed quite stealthily. So I don't think to your average eye, you would just spot them. But we're obviously going to be showing you where they're fitted and why they're fitted to this car. And also giving you guys a little bit more information as to what this car is functionally for. Because the other videos still didn't quite tied up and explained fully. So come with us around this RS and we'll show you exactly how awesome not only do these blue lights look, but how stealthily they've been installed. So before we get these blue lights on and demonstrate the variants of all the siren tones, will you explain to me whether this is actually a functioning police car? But if so, why would you get blue lights fitted to a car that doesn't work? I'm a little bit confused. Help explain. So no, it's not going to be an operational car. Um, the operational cars have to go through a testing procedure in order for them to be authorised for blue light work. Now, the Mark III Focus RS did originally go through that process and obviously it passed it. Um, but for this one, because we're modifying it, every time we did a modification, we'd have to test it again. Um, so we're not going to do that. That being said, if it's life or death and we are out in this car, then it's a decision for us. We're not just going to let somebody die because it's a Focus RS in a fancy livery. Um, so that's a decision we'd have to make whilst we're out in it. And also you mentioned to me earlier that regarding the blue lights, you chose not to have the roof bars. Is there any particular reason behind that? Yeah, so we've put what we call kind of a covert fit on this car, um, but the lights aren't necessarily in the same place they would be on an operational car because they don't need to be. You know, this car is for shows and things like that because the kiddies want to see the blue lights on a police car. Um, and it offers us a bit of protection as well if we're out dealing with things on the street that we have to stop and deal with. But no, you're right, we haven't put uh, a roof bar on it because quite frankly, we don't need to. And we've put this lovely carbon effect wrap on the roof. <laughs> race car. And, race car, yeah. And we don't want to ruin that by scratching it with you know, the attachments for the roof bar or drilling through the roof uh, to put the wires through to the roof bar because ultimately at the end of the project we're going to sell the car and no one's going to buy it with holes drilled in the roof. No that makes complete sense despite the fact that the holes would have made it more lightweight hence more race car made it faster and maybe would have allowed it to compete with my focus. No. Now regarding the RS not being a functional police car, as you will see we have got the Volvo right here, which is a real police car and it stands out by the reflective livery and also the lights that are slightly different to that that you're going to see on the RS in a minute. Owen, so now you've actually got these blue lights on, will you run around the car really quick and show us where they are? I swear you're a the child. <laughs> you're a child. <laughs> So, okay, there are four there at the bottom of the windscreen. I'm not cutting this out, that's your fault. <laughs> You've obviously got the four in the bottom of the windscreen there. Uh, they've cleverly put the police thing on the back of the sun visor there. Uh, at the front here, you've got the two obvious ones that point forwards, but what they've also done as it's a show car, and this wouldn't be on a normal police car, is they've put two on the back there. 
uh, which project onto the radiator and give that nice contrasting strobe effect. Um, so I think that looks pretty cool, to be honest. Round to the side, you've got the flashing one uh, just above the GCM logo there. And then on the back here, you've got the two just below the spoiler at the top of the, uh, the rear windscreen there. Um, and I must remember to take that off. Now that's not all, is it? Because you've also got the sirens as well that make all kinds of crazy noises. We have, yeah. yeah you're going to show us that? Yeah. So I see that you've got the control panel and the glove box. Is that where they live on all police cars? Uh, no, normally they'd be in the middle there where obviously the driver can reach them, but we don't need the driver to be able to reach them in this car because, like I say, it's not used for operational work. Okay, so? So, so if we put that on, it'll light up the whole lot. Okay. Um, can I get outside and go and have a look? You can get outside and go and have a look. This is on siren test mode, so normally they'd be louder. That's really loud. Yeah, so there is a purpose behind the toning on sirens, um, and we will use different ones uh, on different parts of the blue light run and it kind of some of them are for longer distance work and some of them are for much shorter when there's more traffic around us and it makes people more aware of our presence um, but we can explain all that to you when we go and do a blue light run one day right so now we've actually shown the blue lights and the different sirens we have got brakes tires and coming soon uh, brakes, tyres and wheels. So hopefully you've seen the effect that the blue lights on the front of the car have on members of the public as we're trying to move through on the blue light run and you can see how people do funny things when they panic and they try and move out the way. Now what we don't want you to do is bump up on curbs and things like that to get out of the way which will trash your alloys but what we do need you to do is just have a think about how you can safely let us pass through. Now, if you want to know more about the blue lights and things and the other lights that you can have on your car, we did a video last year and it's up there. You can click on the link um, and that will tell you all about the lighting and the lighting regulations and the things that you can have on your car. But please do not put blue lights on the front of your car because people will mistake you for a police car and they will do those silly things to try and get out of your way. Right, Owen, now to summarise today's video, obviously we've shown the blue lights. Yeah. We have also demonstrated the different siren tones. Yeah. And we have also brought attention to the fact that in the next video, we're looking at doing wheels, tires, and brakes. Yeah. Yeah, and we're also going to be installing a next base dash cam into the front, the back, and internally as well into the RS. Yeah. So I'm really excited to do that. Oh, and the Maxton stuff turned up and, today. And the Maxton design stuff, yeah. So we've got lots to do, and obviously there's way more than we've just mentioned coming for this RS. But in the comments of the video on YouTube, they brought attention to the fact that police was actually lost in the livery of the Tiger Stripes. And we're just letting you know that obviously myself and Owen and of course the boys at Rapid Graphics are going to be sorting that and hopefully making the police stand out from the yellow Tiger Stripes in the background. As we did get quite a few comments about that, which we can uh, talk about at a later date. That's uh, good because yeah. we want people to be involved in this yeah. and we are listening to the feedback and we're getting that sorted. So we are. that's all good. We can't do it all ourselves. We need some help with it as well. And that's what we've got and that's what we've listened to. But guys, before we go, I just want to apologize for the length it takes to make these videos. Obviously I work as well. Owen does his job yeah. and yeah. then we get these videos. What do you do? We get these videos. <laughs> in the best way that we can, obviously when we have time to do so. So with 20 years of policing now behind me, I'm sure you can imagine, I've seen a lot of things that have happened on the roads. Oh, steady! You stupid idiots! sake! Now, what we want to do before we start doing the performance modifications on this car is to fit a dash cam because the dash cam is one of those things that is affordable but it will also keep you safe on the road and I'm sure like me you've seen many things that have happened in front of you on the road and you feel oh I wish I could have recorded that. But also in the event of a collision if you've got something recorded that could say look this wasn't my fault this is what happened in front of me there was no way of me avoiding it or with the rear view camera that we're going to show you as well it can show what's happened behind you so there are really good reasons why you should be fitting something like this now we wanted to show you how easy it was to fit this road safety stuff inside your car and next base kindly got in touch and they offered to supply us a dash cam and some other bits and pieces so today we're down here at workshop and we're going to show you 
without breaking anything, hopefully, how easy it is for me and George to fit this flash cam inside the car. Now, because Owen's not very technically minded, I'm gonna give you guys some do's and don'ts when looking to purchase a dash cam. Now, let's start off with saving money because naturally, we all go onto Amazon and look for a bargain. Let me just say that when you find a dash cam for 16, 20, 30, 40, or around that price bracket, you tend to find that they've been oversaturated on the images, and as a result, the resolution will be really poor. Now imagine yourself in an accident, and you try and get your footage to show it to your insurance company, send it to OpSnap, or even just look at it with your friends and family, you'll find that the registration plate will not only not be viewable, but it'll be completely useless footage. Now that's also why image stabilization is massively important. No different to using a professional camera like the one that we're using today, the Sony a7C, or using your iPhone or your Android phone, you will find that shaky footage is just not usable. This is exactly why you get what you pay for comes into mind when purchasing a dash cam. So Owen, which model did we choose to fit in the RS today? So we've got a 622, um, and this one's got your 4K uh, image recording, it's got digital stabilization, it's got what three words as well, which is really good if you're involved in an incident, give us the what three words and we can find you on mapping straight away. So we've also got some other bits here, we've got the dash cam hardwire kit, we've got cabin view camera, uh, we've got the SD card, we've got the mount for the dash cam, and a reflection-free lens, which I'm sure we will get to as we fit it all. Um, but it looks like they've sent us a whole system for the car that covers front, back, inside the cabin, and everything else. So let's get cracking. Stop messing about with that. Come on, let's go and get the trim off. I've got the tools. Come on. This bit. No! God, please, no! Now, I think it's fair to say that when installing a dash cam onto your windscreen, you want to make sure it's placed correctly. Believe it or not, I've actually witnessed someone that's had a dash cam mounted right here in front of them in the direct line of sight. My personal recommendation through experience would be to place it behind the rear view mirror so that not only is it out of your way and doesn't cause distraction, but it's also in a position that can see directly into traffic. So I'm gonna carefully place it in here, just like that, behind the rear view mirror. Make sure it's nice and secure. Do you need help? Do you want me to do it for you? No, I just want to know where the hole is because now you've stuck it on the windscreen, I can't, can't see it. Got it. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. When installing this hardwire kit, is it as difficult as it looks? No, not really. No, it's fairly simple. Um, it's just a matter of feeding the wires down through. Um, however, what you've got to be careful of, and I spoke to the team here this morning, is where the airbags are located because what you don't want to do is have the wire going in front of the airbag it needs to be tucked in behind it so just be aware of that because otherwise it can affect the airbags and um, if in the event they did go off so yeah just be aware of that um, and just take your time feeding the wires that's the main thing because what you don't want is the wires hanging out do you so take your time feed it make sure it goes through in all the right places um, and then just make sure you choose the right fuse. So because all these wires look so confusing, what is a hardwiring kit over that of just plugging it into your cigarette lighter? The hardwire kit just makes it a neater install in the car. So once we've put it all in and wired it in down here, you won't have any of the wires that you would have if you put it in here. There's nothing wrong with putting it in there. It's just I don't like wires being visible, so I'd rather it was all tucked away. And then when we turn the ignition on on the car, it all springs into life. Um, so we don't have to worry about it and it all should work seamlessly. Uh, it looks confusing with all these little wires, but you only actually need one of these and you just need to work out which one you use uh, and then tuck it all away, find your earth um, and it should work. To get the fuse out, we need to get the fuse puller, which helpfully should be under here. Any of the wonders of modern technology. There it is underneath there where I'm pointing uh, that's a metal rail and so that should provide an earth it might not be as good as drilling a new one into the bodywork or going through into the engine bay but hopefully that should work so now you've actually wired in the dash cam if I press the ignition right here we should moment of truth notice the dash cam come to life awesome you've done a good job should we fit the rear camera now then? No, let's go and get some lunch first. We'll go and get some Greg's or something. Greg's? You're paying. Yeah, let's go Miller and Carter then. Five minutes later. Don't touch. Put Why? Down. You're pretending like you've actually put some work in. I've just threaded yeah. the wire through here, what, taken like, the trim off. Whilst you've been eating lunch. So guys, in context, this little bit here oh. that goes into the rear, the rear window if you like, the tailgate, whatever you want to call it, you can actually thread a few wires through this. 
Now, I did that on my ST. That's also what Owen has done on his did cars you? in the past as did well. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You did it. Yes. Yeah, really? When I did a D-Wiper and a few other bits as well, but also installing previous dash cams in the past. Now, there we go. He's going to break everything. <laughs> but, you know, I must say, a couple of pounds on Amazon. Plastic removal tools are a fantastic addition to fitting anything with wires. Yeah, they're mine. <laughs> as you can see here, guys, wires can go through this, so it's a really good way to do it. So I suggest you give it a go. And use one of those. Yeah, that works. Coat hanger, good option. Pokey stick. So that will now thread the wire through, which is attached on the other end of the coat hanger. In theory. Guys, you know how earlier I mentioned that <laughs> Owen isn't very well versed at fitting things like dash cams, and he's probably best left to be a road safety policeman? To be fair, I've got it all the way through to here before I've mis made a mistake. What he's um, done is he's threaded it through here, basically there, and it's supposed to have gone under and then through that hole. So now he's got to pull it all the way through and start, start again. again. I'm glad that you've actually seen a mistake he's made, but it should be easy to fix. There we are, fixed it. Almost, you would have get it back through that flexi part. Yeah, no, no, I've got to put it back on my pokey stick. So when it comes to fitting the rear dash cam, of course, we have previously put the cables through here that you've seen in the last clip. Now with the mount itself, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the camera is pointing in the right direction so that it does actually capture anything that might go wrong behind you. Now, of course, with this next base dash cam, it's important that the lens is pointing this way. It allows you to do that on a little mount, which is actually detachable. So it's quite useful. You can move it around in any angle that you see fit. But of course, once it's pushed down and done in a good way, it's not gonna come off. So that's exactly what you want. Just make sure it's attached securely. Yeah, so there's a couple of other things that were in the box. Um, so that one's a rear view camera. Um, so that looks like it records from the front dash cam, but through the car and out the rear window. Um, but we've got the rear window cam, so we won't be needing that because we're looking straight out of the back anyway with our rear window cam. Um, and this one is a cabin view camera, um, so that'll also plug in onto your front dash cam. Um, and this is potentially useful for taxi drivers because mm -hmm. uh, it will show you know, the back of the car and the interior of the car. So, you know, it's a bit of a safety thing for taxi drivers. Okay, so several times I asked you, did you plug it in? I did plug it in. You didn't plug it. Well, you plugged it in, just not quite far well, enough. When we so, went to Greg's, someone came round and they must have no, I don't think the it. wire was even that far round. So you can make all the excuses you like, but I have now plugged it in. Thank you for your contribution. And Look, I hand yeah, wrapped this car on putting it back and again. I took all the trim out, yeah, threaded all, right, all the wires. Yeah. If I shut the boot, hopefully you can see me if you've fitted it right. Yeah, well, maybe. I can see you just about. Can there you see go. me? Um, it, could, it could do with being twisted to the right place. Ironically, I told them that they need to twist it into the right place. It needs twisting. Right, hold it on, let twisting. me do it from here. So when? How's there we that? go, I can see you. Go back, wave. Is that right now? Fantastic job. See, I told you I fitted it properly. Yeah, excellent. Well done. Well done, George. Well done. <laughs> so guys, I was just telling Owen to get outside the car and let you guys know that he's now put the trim back together, then put the memory card in, and what have you just done? Uh, I put the memory, well, I tried to put the memory card into the plug for the um, power socket. No, it wasn't the power socket, it was for the rear view camera that, that you fitted in correctly. Yeah, that you've been twisting around yeah. left, right, and centre, wondering yeah, why it wouldn't, wouldn't go in. Go in but, yeah, it goes in yeah. the slot that yeah, says it goes in that one. micro SD card yeah. on it. So, this is important, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Um, you have to put your memory card in like that so that it can actually record your yeah, footage. So, that it actually records stuff. Push it in with your nail. I'm trying now. There we go. Easy, Fabulous. easy. This camera's now installed. Rear camera is also now working, isn't it? We checked that earlier that you guys might have seen. It is working. Now I've just plugged it in at the other end. Yeah. Magnetically connect up there. Just there set that on. And then we press the ignition down here. And the car catches fire. <laughs> no. And the camera will come to life. You happy with yourself now? Yeah, I think I did well. You did there. pretty good filming this, to be fair, while I did all the work. Yeah, yeah, like you always do, yeah. Now, I think it's fair to say that the viewers probably watching might not know some of the features that dash cams as a whole can actually add to a vehicle on the road when it comes to road safety. So is there anything that you would like to tell them that maybe someone might have overlooked when maybe researching a dash cam to purchase? Well, a dash cam's not just a dash cam anymore, is it? It incorporates lots of other technology that is there to try and keep you safe on the road. So sure. you've got things like the what three words. Yeah. Um, so in the event of an incident, you've got those three words that you can give to the emergency services. And yeah. you can do that using Alexa, um, which is the voice control through the dash cam. Um, so that all kind of works together. 
Um, and then you've got things like the, the 3G sensors for parking. Yeah. So if your car gets knocked while parking, it will automatically turn on and record. Now I must add, we didn't hardwire it to a permanent live. Am I right no, in saying that? No, we... Although you can. Say we, I hardwired it to an ignition live. So I don't think that that works with the parking stuff. Yeah. But for me, Let I don't really need it um, because we don't leave the car really anywhere where we're going to sure. worry about it like that. So Pretty cool yeah. though. I mean, sorry to interrupt you, but it's pretty cool that yeah. you know, if they leave their car while they're at work on the side of the street and someone does knock it, the dash cam knows that I'm going to record this and save it so that you guys can use that in the event of trying to claim it. So, but yeah. it's, a, it's an example of buying the technology that works for you because sure. everybody's needs are different. So yeah, yeah, it's just an example of that really. No, I do want to cover um, resolution because we mentioned that you know 1080p is a bare minimum. Um, 4K naturally is obviously the best option. But when it comes to resolution, not only can you see a number plate better in the event that you zoomed in on that clip to provide evidence, but also if someone said you were speeding because naturally you can say, well, it was a 30, look at that traffic sign over there. So there are so yep. many things that dash cams can do. And ultimately it's down to you guys to decide which one that you choose to put in your vehicle. But this video today was all about highlighting that you can make yourself safer and more protected at a cost that pretty much everyone can afford. So something that's easy to install, like the thing that we've done today. Aye. That the thing that we've done today is definitely worth your time. Now I know Owen likes to think he did all the work, but the reality is that um, yeah, he he, he kind of did do all the work. Mm. Yeah, you bought lunch though. I bought lunch. Yeah, but I, I didn't filmed. get Miller and Carter. I got no, Greg's. No, I put the cam in the window. Yeah, and it I fell did off. The I put the cam in the rear window. Yeah, upside down, and then you didn't plug it in. So, you know, your help was gratefully received. Thank you very much. It took me probably another hour and a half refer to, to do it because you Refer to TikTok right. because you made a mistake and we put it on TikTok. One. One mistake. One mistake. Now, to summarize today's video, guys, I think it's fair in saying that a dash cam is a worthy upgrade for anyone driving on the UK roads, especially if you're a new driver. Now, regarding the one that we fitted in the car, naturally, it is of high quality, but make sure that you choose the one that's right for you. Now, you mentioned Vision Zero earlier, Owen. Have you got anything to add regarding just that? Yeah, a big thank you to Vision Zero Southwest. They've put up the money for the car, and although we sell the car at the end of the project and the money will go back into road safety, without them, we wouldn't have the car, we wouldn't have the dash cam, we wouldn't be able to do this series. So if you want to know more about them, go onto their website, but big thank you to Vision Zero Southwest. So now we've actually done the livery, we've done the blue lights as well, and we've installed a really cool dash cam, we're actually going to be starting with the modifications. So we have the Max and Design Lowline kit coming soon, yeah, wheels, we're, tires and brakes. Yeah, wheels, tires and brakes. And we're working alongside a very reputable exhaust company too. Yeah. And we have some more in the lineup that we can't, or can we tell them? No. We can't tell them, keep it no, a secret. Not yet. Now I bet you didn't know you can make your car faster without messing with your engine whatsoever. Now why not tune in today to watch us fit some Lamborghini style mods to the police Focus RS. Now, to those of you that have been watching our Police Focus RS series, Modifying a Police Car, you might have known that we haven't yet started on the performance mods, but that's exactly why today we are at MJ Performance down in Plymouth to install some of the best array of modifications seen on one of these cars on the internet. Now, Owen, they want to know, what is your favorite modification to go on a car? Because I think after 20 years of experience, you've certainly got some knowledge. Okay, so the favorite mod that I've got on my car is the brakes. Okay. okay so today we're here to do wheels, tires, and brakes because they're all working together to make the whole package work as a whole. That's what we're gonna to do today. We are gonna fit the biggest brakes that we can get under these wheels. They are immense. Now, when we say we've got some big modifications coming on the Police RS, we don't say that lightly. This company here, MJ Performance, have built this incredible custom Focus RS that's actually running methanol, but more on that later. But Owen, why did we choose MJ out of all the other places we could have gone to? I mean, you've just got to look at this behind you. Martin really knows his stuff. It's local to us as well, so it just made absolute sense to come to MJ Performance. Right, now, before we put this stuff on the car, we've got it laid out on the desk here, uh, and Martin's kindly offered to show us around the kit that we're gonna be putting on. Now, the first thing that I can see here is that monster great caliper, Martin. Yeah, so can't miss it, can you? Let's have a look at that. Show that to the viewers, because that's so, just nuts. Look at this, viewers, all right? 
So this is not your average caliper. So this is, as it said, like Owen said, it's a monster caliper. So it's an eight pot progressive piston, which means it's got eight pistons inside. They're different sizes. That's all to do with the, the way that it breaks. Um, it's all nicely finished. It's got our logo embossed down the side that's properly engraved. So it's like supercar sized and yeah, you can have this on your Mark III Focus RS. It's very impressive. Um, but it takes four yes. <laughs> pads. Yeah, it takes four, four brick pads. And interestingly, <laughs> the, if you look, they're all embossed with different numbers, M3, B3. They have to be put in a certain position. And it yeah. goes on that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, <laughs> that's your 400 mil disc, three quarter cross drilled, and center bell, all engraved. Now, believe it or not, that is not far off the same weight might be a bit lighter, actually, uh, than the original disc. I'm going to put it down Yeah. <laughs> before I drop it. So we've also got the rear kit as well, yeah. um, but we're going to talk about that when it goes on the car, because yeah. we had a few issues making up that kit. Um, so we've now got a bespoke kit that will go on the back of the car, and we'll explain all that as we fit it. But thank you, Martin, for no now. Problem. That's shown everyone the kit. Let's go and get it on the car. Let's do it. Right, now I'm really excited, because Martin says he's got a really important job for me. So I'm going to get this kit off, get changed, and I'm going to see what he wants me to do. So we're just removing the wheels, so we can uh, get to the brakes and fit the big brake kit. So, George, when are you getting an RS? Right, so I've been looking for Owen everywhere. I think Martin's given him a job. Mate, what are you doing? Oh, well, apparently this job is suitable for my level of technical expertise and I'm not allowed to touch the car. Is that all because you screwed up the next base dash cam last oh, week? Oh, we're back to that, are we? Okay, yeah, one mistake and I'm never going to live that down and I get relegated to floor sweeper. But hey-ho. Now, in case you're wondering why I often get changed in and out of uniform, um, oh, you come under here. Uh, you might also be wondering why this car's in pieces and it's because it's having the engine forged. We'll put a link below to the MJ Performance YouTube channel and you can watch that series and the development of that engine. But yes, the reason I get changed in and out of uniform is because to bring the car down, it's a fully marked car. I need to be in uniform to be able to do that. So I'm on duty to bring the car down. When I get here, I'm generally not working when we're filming these videos so I can get changed and I can help out in the build of the car because I like to get my hands dirty. So that's the reason why I'm in and out of uniform. Mate, you never videos. do any work. Stop talking rubbish. Yeah, like you walking around with a camera, yeah. So Owen, with alloy wheels being such a popular upgrade for car enthusiasts, why have we gone from the RS wheels to these new Revo ones? Well, the ones that we got with the car, the optional forged alloys, are a really nice wheel. Um, but aesthetically, I really like the Revo ones as well. And they also work with everything else that we're putting on the car to make it a really balanced uh, package. But I'll hand over to Martin and he'll tell you more about the technical stuff. Right, yes indeed, viewers. Um, so what Owen's got there is, like you said, it's the uh, Revo wheel. It's a flow formed uh, lightweight. It's quite a bit uh, lighter than the original, as Owen's going to demonstrate now. Um, it's also eight and a half J as opposed to eight J on the original. So it gives you that better stance. Um, I just like them. I just think it's a great upgrade. I do notice that you've actually got the Revo wheels and some fancy tires on your custom RS over there. Exactly. So that gave chance for yourselves and uh, Owen to see what the cars look like on the car, which I think is important and with a big brake kit. And yes, that runs the optional cut two tires, which we can talk about a bit later on. When choosing modifications for any car, I find myself to be really indecisive. But lucky for us, when myself and Owen actually chose these Revo wheels and the tires, we of course had a lovely example to look at with the MJ Performance Custom RS. Now the other day, we took these wheels down to Tire Marks in Tavistock, where they very kindly and very carefully, I must add, fitted these lovely PS4S tires to our Revo wheels. <laughs> Now, we're really grateful for them helping us, but also I must say, with the MJ car having Cup 2 tires on that, it's more orientated towards the track. And of course, with ours being primarily a road use police car, naturally, this is the reason we went behind the PS4S's. MJ Performance here advised that we went for these tires, and with tire marks as well, agreeing strongly on what MJ had to say, naturally, we made the right choice. I hope you guys agree. You'll have to let us know in the comments. But before we summarize the next clip and show you the brakes going on, we wanted to mention the wheel now, on the innermost edge here, we had to get it balanced in that way. Now, the reason being is that Martin actually suggested that had we put them on the other side, it would have rubbed up against our massive new calipers. So I've actually made those mistakes with my ST, and Martin actually knew about that already. So we're really grateful for the advice, because of course, we don't want those massive new calipers being wrecked by the wheel weights. So remember to bear that in mind if you go for the MJ setup as well. Right, Mike, I say it's about time we get the old setup off the RS and get the new big boy MJ set up on. Yeah, absolutely. Get these stripped off, all cleaned up and rebuild the new brakes. Yeah. So 
So now the 400 mil disc is going on and obviously we're gonna have a lot more stopping power. So at some point next year, I'll actually be getting a big brake kit on my ST. And as you can see, the MJ Performance big brake kit looks pretty epic. And I'm seriously jealous that it's going on the police Focus RS. George, yep. George, have a look at this. Look. So Mike's just taken this off of our car. That's what you'd normally see on okay. the outside of the disc. Have a look at the inside. Oh my God. Yes, um, and apparently, uh, I'm not an MOT tester, but apparently that would probably only be an advisory on the MOT, but as far as I'm concerned, it's time to put that in the bin. <laughs> Chuck it in the bin, for sure. Uh, oh, what I was gonna mention also is, if the viewers could see this, can I have the camera? Give me the camera there, look. If we turn this around, we've got Nike, Adidas, 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 I'm matching, he's not. Look at the state of that. You can't jump on board with the viewers. They need to be matching, but Nike, they give Adidas, me Jeff in the Nike, comments, Adidas, And now you're seriously? siding with them. Yeah, you can have the camera back now. Right, now, Martin, just while you're doing tyre pressures, what PSI do you actually set these wheels at? So on the Mark 3 Focus RS, uh, we set the rears at a 38 PSI and the front's at 41. That's what's recommended from the manufacturer. We stick to that, and that's when you get your optimum wear, grip, etc. So what we're doing now is Mike's going to be uh, fitting one of our huge monster 8-pot progressive piston calories as we discussed before. It's difficult to try and put it across on camera what it's like compared to the stock braking force on the front. It's like day and night. All right. If so dangerous still... could be described as good and efficient, yeah. then they would be classed as dangerous in a good way. In a good way. Because, Strange way to describe it. In a good it, way because yeah. Uh, yeah, all your internal organs want to try and jump out of your stomach when you're hard on the brakes. <laughs> you know? So emergency stop wise, it's, you know, and it, and I mean, you have sort of like experienced our, our breaks on I the have. Fiesta, George, yeah. and you. So, um, and it's, yeah, it's, you get that, some people would get a sicky feeling. Now, there's a really good reason why we've done all of these mods in the one video. And that's because all of these mods are designed to work together and they are the basis of your car moving forwards. Because your main contact patch with the road is there. So it's really important that you've got really good tires. Now our really good tires go over our really lightweight and good rims, which go over the new brakes. So all of this is designed when it's reassembled to work seamlessly. We don't have to make alterations that we didn't want to do by cutting away bits of bodywork or using spacers or anything like that. It just all works perfectly. And that's why we've done it all in the one video. Right guys, so over the years, I've learned a fair amount from quite a few people that I've been making videos with. And Martin in particular has given me an experience, let's just say that, in a Fiesta. Now, when we did that, he actually taught me a little trade secret that he gives across to his customers when they purchase big brakes here at MJ Performance. Now, what I'm gonna tell you might shock you. Brakes actually make you faster. Now, the reason being is, of course, big brakes will allow you to slow down more efficiently on the roads, but better still, when you're out on the track day, they'll also reduce brake fade. Brake fade can be really annoying because naturally your track time will not be utilized properly if your brakes don't work and you can't do as many laps. But better still, with big brakes like this, like the one we've got on the Focus RS, you'll actually be able to brake later going into corners, which means your lap times will be better and you'll be utilizing your experience on a track day as a whole. So not only do these brakes allow Owen to stop much more efficiently and safely on the roads, but the MJ Performance Big Brake Kit will allow his car to be faster. Just goes to show, you don't always need a forged engine, big turbos, and a remap to make your car quick. Looks like a big brake kit can do that just on its own. So Martin, what exactly are you doing to the rear brake setup on the RS now? Right, so it's pretty straightforward. So original disc off, this is a 300 mil disc, just pass one over to Mike. Um, difference is, that's a solid one piece. This is a two piece. It's got a custom bell built onto it, specifically for this application to, to go with the rear wheels, so that the offset's correct, matches the front, and the stance is correct. Um, yeah, so, and the, obviously you can see it's cross drilled. The S2500 rear pads, braided line, that's it really. Now you'll notice now that Mike has actually really efficiently put together the rear brake setup on the Focus RS. Now he's doing the braided brake lines now, which is a really good upgrade for any car, even if you do have standard brakes, but it's quite a technical procedure. He also needs to actually bleed the system as well, which can take about 40 minutes, but I must give Mike credit where it's due because he's done so much work behind the camera. And I know these videos come across as really short and efficient, but take it from me, he has done so much work today. So big, big credits to him and Martin here at MJ Performance. The wheels are now back on the car. Oh my gosh, look at that. I'm sorry, I need to get close. That just looks amazing. Guys, check this out. You've absolutely really smashed it. Well, apart from the wheels needed to be cleaned. Yeah, um, no, but they still look so good. So the wheels are now finally on the car. I'm so excited to check the, oh my gosh. Look how great these things look. 
So here we are, guys, the new wheels and brakes on the Mark III Police Focus RS. Look at them. Wow. Now, impromptu, I want to know, the car's just come out of MJ's garage. What do you think, first thoughts, of how the car looks? It's awesome, isn't it? I mean, what's, what's the modern word? Sick. <laughs> <laughs> looks sick. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I can't believe the amount of times I have to stop and deal with people by the side of the road who have got bodywork modifications that are quite literally sometimes sharp enough to take off somebody's leg. Bruh. And that is exactly why we're fitting this front splitter from Max and Design, this grille from Zunsport, some side skirts that are over there, and some custom mud flaps to the Mark III Focus RS. Are they not supposed to have hey, the holes like pre-drilled? you just whack the rack. I, this is important. I want to know whether these holes are supposed to be pre-drilled because this is always what screws it up for me. Is this not something they're supposed to have done? I don't know. I'm going to no do comment, it now. No comment, <laughs> right. Where's the drill? You've been hitting all kinds of curves. This is all mashed That was already like it. Bits are all full. Was that like previous it. owner, was it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. All no, I've done is hit some water. There are. There's some hardware over there. I had to literally chew it out the packet with my teeth. Because their packaging's good. I mean, that's a good thing. But yeah, the hardware's over there, just on the shelf. Why do you need instructions? Your What's the first fine. thing you do is throw the instructions away, surely? No, it's that's because we're men. That's what we do. <laughs> This on the front of your car is gonna create a massive downforce on your front bumper, because that's what it's designed to do. So please do not stick it on with double-sided sticky tape or self-tappers. This needs to be bolted properly through the bumper so it doesn't come off, because otherwise on the motorway, if that comes off, it's gonna do serious damage to both your car and any other car that's around you that gets hit by all the bits of your spoiler as it gets crunched underneath your wheels. I have so something to interject that's really as well. Important. Black splitter black bottom of the car, don't use a white bonding agent. Try and find a black one. I've made that mistake before. <laughs> Mind my bumper. Right, guys, I must stress, it's such a blessing to actually have the car up on a ramp, because doing front splitters over the years on my driveway was awful. You already ripped this one out in a puddle, one. Yeah, when Owen went through a flood the other day, not quite the one on the Adam C videos, which we should actually take the RS through. Come on, yes, yes! <laughs> I couldn't see it, I'm too tall. You're like five foot four, you can see it. Or shall I undo the screws so that we do it properly? What, you mean the Phillips head? You gave me a torch screw, yeah? Come on then. Thank you very much. So you know how to use that? Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Honestly, George, it's Because it's rounded, because this oh, tits. That was not rounded off and I've seen it just now. Viewers, this car will be for sale at the end of the project, so if you want a car that's been worked on by George, then uh, <laughs> it will be available. What have you done here? I haven't done anything, that was Owen. Honestly, one job. You did that when one you went One job. Through. All you had to do was undo a screw. Now bugger off, take it away. <sighs> Need to drill a pilot hole. <coughs> Getting the hang of it now. Yeah, boy. <coughs> Martin, you might need a new floor. Well, unless you like these holes. Do you like that? Very good. Yeah. Lucky George didn't do it, isn't it? Some You're people good. think I'm bonkers. Yeah, that one. I know it well. I think I'm free. Yeah. Man, I'm just <laughs> I, I listen to it every night before I go to bed. But how does it go then? Just remind me of the bonkers song from Bass Hunter. Uh, some people think I'm bonkers. Some people think I'm free. I, I make it up as I go along. I like to add lib with the lyrics, see? I'm a bit of a freestyle rapper. Actually, no, if you listen to Bass Hunter. <sighs> it should be on the side, surely. Yeah, you, can let, you can let that go now, mate. Bolt it on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the way of the camera. These bolts are easy to fit in here when the under tray was off. Now it's not my fault that the under tray wasn't on when we tried to fit the bolts back on, which went in easily as a result. But it turns out the under tray needed to be on, so now it's much harder to fit. So hence you're seeing Mike do the majority of the work. Because clearly me and Owen do it all off camera and the professionals don't do anything at all. So Mike, please explain to the viewer, what did we do wrong? All of it. There was no we here, There's, what did George do wrong? I Can think, you stop it? blaming everything on me? I'm trying my best while trying to multitask. Filming. Thinking are you filming? Of... You're, not, you're on the wrong side of the camera, so how no, are you filming? No, because I put it on the tripod so that we can do this together. Yeah, but so you're not actually doing it, are you? The camera's sitting on the tripod, you muppet. Jesus Christ, I'm gonna... there is a hedge well suited to you over there. So the problem's now been solved with the under tray. What happened, Owen? Uh, so, Basically, when we put the under tray on, uh, we couldn't get our hand in to do up the bolts. So we've now had to make a couple of subtle modifications here, as you to saw the earlier. under tray uh, in order to be able to do that. So nothing, a little sore thing um, couldn't resolve. Now you've designed those stunning mud flaps 
Absolutely, they are stunning. No, they are nice. I'll they give them credit are. where Look. it's due. Look at that. But Rally Flats made them. I mean, you to didn't. be fair, that wasn't hard to design, was it? But knowing what uh, you did, knowing at least the past, is you would have got a little pencil, you would have drawn on a little bit of paper and sent him a message on WhatsApp being like, I want it looking a little bit like this. Yes. <laughs> yes, pencil, paper. Yeah, that's that's how you do it. Oh, you want the Zunsport instructions? I want the Zunsport thing. Yeah, the Zunsport instructions are in the bag right here. No, that's the wrong bag. No, but they give away a bag, but they're universal instructions, surely. No, no, it's got a little fitting kit that comes with it. Donut. Like a hardware kit somewhere. There it is. Found it. I didn't put it there. We better read the instructions. It goes <laughs> against everything, doesn't it? You fitted one of these on your car, didn't you? I did, indeed. Just badly. What? No. Kit contains lower mesh grill, M4 times 20 Allen pins, and three of retaining brackets. We need a screwdriver and an Allen key. Fit masking tape around the apertures to protect the paintwork while fitting. Where's the Carefully screwdriver and the Allen key? Grill. Uh, well, you don't know how to use a screwdriver. You've got the one you got in Christmas you? cracker in the car. You haven't had the training yet in that. Okay, let's mask it up first. Oh, it's not tall enough to not tall enough. <laughs> it's a little bit too high for him. It's not funny. <laughs> I need a box to stand on. What we could do is just lower the ramp slightly, I no, suppose. This is that what is I'll tell you what, you can get it in a minute. They give you a ticket on the way home. <laughs> we have just spent about 20 minutes. 20 minutes looking for, for those, because uh, apparently I've taken them and moved them somewhere. Uh, and then George found them in his pocket. So, yeah, that was We've all done it. Well you look through your mobile phone and you find out it's in your hand. Yeah. Anyway, right. guys. Anyway, back to fitting. We're this. fitting the Zunsport grill, and this is actually really easy to fit. You simply place it in, and you've got two little holding brackets that just go in. So you can feed your hand through here. Three. Three of them? Three. Okay, I stand corrected. You can feed them through here, you screw them in with a Phillips head, and then that holds it in place. I'm actually proud to admit right now that all the, the jip that Owen gives me, I'm actually correct for once. I said, feed the bolt through, and it'll go into the retaining clip on the back, and he says, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. They've got pre-existing holes built into the Zunsport. You cannot see that. Look, let me show them those little holes that are actually... You wanna see this one here? Yeah, there we go, see, see look, see they're there. Uh, there's another one in the middle and there's another one down there somewhere but yeah we're trying our best but we do need an allen key to get it in not a phillips head screwdriver i've got a three we're in absolutely fuming because he can't take the tape so off just the bit that george did all he had to do was fit the tape on that was it oh. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna stick this right on your lens <laughs> Now whilst the car was over there on the two poster, we've done the front splitter and we're going to show you the rally flaps as well that we haven't shown you the fitting of, but we're going to walk around the car. But we've moved the car over now onto this ramp so that we can fit the side skirts because obviously we can't do that on the two poster ramp. So if you come around the side of the car here, you will see where we fitted the rally flaps. They actually look so nice. So much nicer than I expected, so I'll give them credit for that. They do look nice. I like the flaps on the... Uh, and they're, they're the mounted car. with metal brackets as well, aren't they? Yeah. But they do look really nice. Fair yeah. play on designing those. Yeah, and that's going to stop all the spray spitting up the side of our car as well. Why are you suddenly happy all of a sudden regarding these side skirts? Why am I suddenly happy? Yeah, because what do they have different that the front splitter didn't have? Self-tappers. Oh, Honestly, well, yeah, why yeah. are you so slow today? <laughs> <laughs> These go on with self-tappers because they're not creating the same downforce that the splitter is. Which so. is really easy, which means we don't have to spend three hours It's doing really it. easy. It means it's going to be much quicker, hopefully, but then there's no way of knowing, is there? It's still easy, but... Yeah, let, let's not let George fit it, eh? <laughs> okay, we might get right. home tonight. George, come here. What do you want? Come here. Look, I'm, I'm holding this so that you can see it. You're showing us what it looks like? Yeah. That badge is this wonky... It's a very wonky badge. <laughs> that badge, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? We revealed the, cl the clear tape. Yeah, my, my um, OCD's not, not like it. We'll that. sort that out. I'll fix the badge. Different We've been method. here so long that there's been a change of season and I've had to put my neck on. <laughs> We're in winter now. <laughs> what, a winter next year? <laughs> it was spring when we started. Oh, it slipped. That was a super close up, wasn't it? 
all those tries of Evan trying to put the Zunspot logo on. You've gone and done it the first try. But this is the piece de resistance on the Zunspot grill. Yeah, yeah boy. Sorted. Welcome to Autosport International. Everything's slowly filling up. Look, we've actually got some empty space, which is definitely not what we're used to here at the NEC. I think George would be angry if you don't have oat milk in his uh, Oh, don't bother with oat milk. Just get in whatever. So we forgot to order George's oat milk, so um, if we just like bring it on there, you'll never know the difference, be fine. That's yours. <laughs> Bye. We're actually at the NEC today with the RS police car on the PAAA stand, talking about safe modifications and ethical tuning. Join us today in today's video to show you around what Autosport International has got to offer. We're doing a panel at three o'clock, live okay. Q&A. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be on it? Yeah, of course. On the stage? Absolutely. What's really impressing me is that this younger, this next generation of enthusiasts, the people that are the future of our industry, think what you're saying, that yeah, fit stuff, but make it safe, make it legal, they think that's great. So we're here at Autosport International with Martin from MJ Performance. Hello. So basically the man behind making this car so powerful. But what I want to ask you is has this police car been turning heads the same way that it has been over on social media? Yeah, George, absolutely. Um, not surprising. All walks of life have been asked different questions about this. Is it a real cop car? Is it a real cop yeah, car? Yeah, yeah. That's the main thing that they've been asking. But uh, exposure is great. Um, yeah, can't... can't uh, can't do any more, it's fantastic. This will make Owen laugh. What I keep seeing is people turning up and they'll be like, yeah. what they're actually they're doing looking is looking for, for they're Owen. Looking they're looking for, for Owen, the yeah. man with the bald head yeah. and the yellow jacket. Well, they're, but they're in reality, just, guys, he's here tomorrow. Yeah. So. Well, as we said before, you know, yeah, yeah. is it a real police car? Is, a, is, it, is he real? Yes, it is, but it, isn't, but it is at the same time. Yeah, it's confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll go into that at a later date. Yeah. See you in a bit. So walking up to this Lambo, I thought it was Corey's, but it's not. Turns out just because it's pink, that doesn't mean it's a friend of ours. It's nice, it's convertible, it's different. That's what we're looking for. Look, it's gold. Serious one, on a serious one, come back here. How long is that gonna stay gold when it's hot? I'd say 10 minutes. It's cool though. I had to ask, of course, Martin is an avid car enthusiast with experience. Yep. And we've just walked around some of the coolest supercars you can probably see worldwide. I mean, that's a crazy statement, but yep. I must ask. Yep. You're a fast forward fan. Yep. I know the cars that you've got at home. Yep. What would you choose out of everything here? What would you choose? Um, well, I'm a Ferrari man. You're a Ferrari man. See, we didn't so... know this. The this one over here, yeah, so it would be the 488. Keep it yeah. simple. 488, Luke Stream car as well. Yeah. The guy behind the camera, guys, in case you didn't know. 488 I mean, Ferrari. Nothing against what we see here, but I wouldn't have it like that. Have it. So he owns big powered RSs, factory, yeah. big powered STs, yeah, yeah. owns a business. He's very good at what he does, and he would choose the Ferrari Absolutely. 488. Yeah. Had to know. ST's going. Focus ST's gone. We get one of these, and it's cooler than the Focus ST. So this replaces the ST, what do you guys think? So now I introduce you to Mark McCann's Lambo, widely renowned on TikTok, social media, all over the place, for being the filthiest Lambo you'll see. And that's because he does mad stuff like drifting on fields. He drives it properly, so I respect to him. But yeah, if you wanna go check out Mark McCann on YouTube, go ahead. But as you can see, he hasn't spent hours detailing it. Owen, he's actually driven it properly like a boss. Context for this GTR. Walked past it, police line do not cross, immediately curious as to what actually happened. Firstly, cream developments. This car was stolen, and to my knowledge, it's one of five wide body GTRs worldwide, full stop. And obviously that's what they do. Now, when this car was stolen, the internet made it so untouchable to the point that the thief actually left it in an underground car park and didn't want any association with it whatsoever. So, cream got it back with the keys. That's all you need to know, but that's why the car is in this condition, not looking perfect, but what a cool story. Never would I think that walking through the NEC and not only coming across a Tesla, but also discovering that electronic tailpipes are now a thing. Now, as you can see down here, we have an electronic tailpipe. And believe it or not, this car, which was before previously completely silent, which might have made car enthusiasts not want an electric car, with their technology is now able to make an array of different noises from an Audi R8 to a futuristic spaceship, to a hot rod, Dodge Rams, Corvette Stingrays, basically all kinds of crazy cars. Now I'm gonna jump inside and put it to the test because they've told me it does this, but I've not yet seen it in person. So let's jump in, let's see what this thing sounds like, and I get Luke to go near those electronic tailpipes. Right, so guys, 
Now I'm in the car with the phone in a position that I can change any of the sounds that I choose. So, this is the Corvette Stingray, is that correct? Okay, so I can just go through this, and this is an Audi R8. Look at this, look. Look at all these options. I can click on a BMW M4. This is so, so cool. Honestly, innovative ideas like this is exactly why we come to Autosport International, and it's meeting these people that further show you guys that it's not all about banning the cars that we enjoy the most. It's about making things better, but also trying to make it more appealing, and that's only going to improve as time goes on. But technology like this is exactly what we want to be seeing. You had one of these when you were younger, didn't you? What's that? A Lamborghini? What is? No, an Escort. The Escort? No, that's a little bit before my time. That was one. it really? You're not yeah. that old? No, no, I'm not that old. You sure? Thank you. No. <laughs> it's a cool car, though. GTR, though. Take your fancy a little bit more than that. Yeah, I like the GTR. You do? Yeah. Yeah, I'd actually quite like one of those. It's almost like he's being recognised. They've made the YouTube channel now. <laughs> Absolute legends have just made the YouTube channel. There we go. And George, coming to you, you've become something of a broadcasting phenomenon. So you've gone out, obviously, as a modifier yourself to create a channel that shows people initially how not to do it and then very quickly the correct and legal way to do it. So obviously you've made a lot of content with Owen, which has become literally viral sensations. So just, just explain to people here that may not know what the channel is, the kind of content you produce, and the reaction that you're getting from primarily a younger audience on what you're doing. Wow, so where do we start? Um, I think like most of the people in here, especially in my age group, started off with a passion for cars, going to car meets, embarrassingly enough, McDonald's car parks, B&Q, the lot, We've every stereotype you can it. imagine. And the same way that I discussed yesterday, when you're on Amazon, you see products and you think, oh, that looks cool. We'd go to car meets and we'd see a screamer pipe or we'd see a new set of wheels or a new spoiler. And the first thing I'd do when I got home is spoiler for a Focus ST, buy. But there was nothing in between my purchase for that and me and my friends fitting it that gave me an understanding of whether it was allowed, firstly, whether it was functional, whether it did anything, whether it was a good use of my money as well, as my mum, I'm sure, would have commented. And I just made videos that were popular to the car community for whatever reason. During lockdown, um, I got a knock on the door with this man and a colleague of his, I can't remember his name. And he just said, look, we've, we've got a user group that's really struggling. We're really struggling to engage with them. And I, I don't want to say it was a cry for help, because it wasn't, because he could have done a lot of it on his own. But it was, look, I like your standard on the videos. I like the way you come across. I had other options, but let's do it. And we, we started some videos together and yeah, never thought it would do as well as it did. And now, I mean, Owen, correct me if I'm wrong, we've probably got one of the, the most successful police road safety campaigns on social media ever, purely off the back of making some silly videos on our phones. Yeah, it's uh, from the police inside, it's the most successful social media campaign that the police have ever done. Um, road safety or not, it's just the most successful social media thing. Um, and for me, it was when I was young, um, and I was young once, uh, <laughs> if I was modifying my car and I didn't know what I was doing, I would go and speak to somebody that I knew and trusted, knew how to do it, um, and we would do it properly, sometimes. Um, but Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully most The truth is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, edit that. Um, but uh, these days, you've got social media. So rather than going and finding somebody like Martin from MJ Performance, who helps us with our car, people will put on a social media group, can I cut the springs on my Clio? And I'm looking at it thinking, oh my God, no, because uh, we know how dangerous that is but you've got Facebook experts that will come on and say, yeah, it's fine, yeah, just do it, you'll never get caught. Um, but for us, a cut spring, as anyone here who's into modifying cars will know, is inherently dangerous and causes the collisions on the road that sees people dying, that means we go out and deal with it and then we have to knock on the door to say that somebody's not coming home, not tonight, not tomorrow, not ever, you'll never speak to them again because those springs that they cut have fallen out of the cups and that car has gone into the field and that person's rolled the car and died. Owen has just spotted Mark McCann's filthy Lambo. What have you got to say? As an OCD car fan like you, what have you got to say I've, about yeah. Mark McCann's Lambo? I think I've found the dirtiest car in the show. <laughs> dirtiest car, for sure. 
Where's just the window? to show you quietly how bad this is. Please do not touch the car. Not even with a microfiber. <laughs> no, definitely not with a microfiber. It'll get it dirty. It's extreme though, but it's driven properly. That's what matters. So a friend of mine popped up and has just introduced me to this man. Now, when I tell you that this man is worth being introduced to, obviously going? you have kindly said that you actually watch our videos already. I have indeed. He's a bit of a car scene kid and uh, Zach's about to tell you why. So yeah, Yeah, well ahead. we uh, started on social media several years ago. And we had, uh, we started to collect cars effectively because okay. um, we had a passion for all things with four wheels and two wheels now. Fiat 500, that, that type of car? I don't have a Fiat 500, I want one. But you we don't. do have things like okay. the Koenigsegg, we've got some Formula One cars, some Le Mans cars and the Kuntash and racing, a bit of everything. We've got a little bit of everything. I thought my Focus ST was cool. Excuse me, I'm drooling now. I thought my Focus ST was cool, the Police RS is cool. I mean, I've got some friends with some cool I mean, cars, but I've... The RS, that's a cool You're car. probably younger than me, man. Ah, oh, but the, the RS is a cool car, regardless. It's like, cool, Fords yeah, are cool. it's cool. It doesn't matter what But you've just flexed on us. Anyone watching this YouTube video, I've got Koenigsegg, I've got Ferrari, I've got the Countach. Now, on the talk of the Countach. Yes. Tell us about your experience with the police, because well, that's, of course, why they're here. What yeah, happened? Yeah, fair. So, it was an honest mistake, okay. and luckily I found a policeman that understood that. So, this car was in restoration for several years, and when we finished restoring it, the one thing a lot of people forget, and it's something we did forget, yeah, yeah, is yeah. tax and MOT. Okay, yeah. Happens. Now, I decided that the worst place to take something like a Kuntash would be London. So, I thought, okay, I'm going to take this into London and drive it around and just have a giggle. The first thing I noticed, the brakes didn't work, so I drove it around just using the handbrake and I thought, oh, God, this is sketchy. This yeah. is sketchy, but I'm going to keep going. Got to about one o'clock in the morning, driving through Piccadilly and blue lights light up and I'm thinking, well, I expected it young in a noisy Lamborghini. Yeah, they must have thought you stole you it. Know, I yeah. Mean, yeah, it's a rare and car. This guy comes up to me and he goes, you must be really, you know, confident. I said, why is that? And he goes, your car hasn't been taxed or MOT since 2017. And I was like, oh, right, that's a problem. And he goes, why is that? I said, I explained to him it's just come out of restoration. He goes, well, let me have a look around the car. Do you mind if I have a quick inspection? The headlights were barely working. The brakes didn't work. The indicators I found out didn't work. And so the restoration was good, but the problem was the last little final bits. I had that thing where you're like, I just want to get in the car and go. So I got in the car and went, but luckily he was like, he just turned around to me and goes, dude, listen, if you're confident enough to take it into London, just get it sorted. And I got it sorted the next day. So it's all good. The thing is, is that it was very much good policeman at the right time. Good I mean, policeman, been, right time. Been a nasty Fluky scenario. Fluky scenario. Complete chance. But yes. what you can learn from this is, yes, absolutely. if you have a Kuntash, you're clearly doing very well for yourself, but if you do have a Kuntash, make sure it's MOT. an MOT here. Yeah. Lesson learned. Love. Zach, there you go. you're a legend. I will link his YouTube channel in the description section below if you want to go see some sick cars. You know where to go. But for now, I think we need to go and have a look around some of your amazing collection. Yeah, Let's do for it. sure. To, Very uh, nice to meet, meet you. you. What do you think? It's incredible. I love it. It's like a combination of like the modified car scene and obviously the police that we tend to see frequent the meets as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of it's it's what I've got a passion for. Yes. Against what I do for a living. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. You know, it's just about using that to educate and engage with yeah. people that like going to the car meets and not watch your videos. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, it's great. For, I wish you were a bit more local to me so you could come to the events that I tend to go so maybe one day you might uh, maybe one day get the chance yeah. to because um a lot of police i notice are willing to let the events go ahead but then obviously it gets to a point as i'm sure you know that they have to step in and and take action and it's good to find the balance yeah and, and that's what's what's most i mean at important. the end of the day if the car meet is there and people are behaving yeah. and, and it's static and we yeah. haven't got the bad driving then mm. we're more than happy to support that yeah but what lets it down is when people start behaving badly and we get the burnouts and the drifting and <laughs> i get that that's exciting yeah 
but on the flip side, we see it when it goes wrong. And last year, it went wrong a number of times yes. around the country, yeah. which I'm sure you're aware mm. of. Uh, and ultimately, people never made it home that night. I mean, there's a lot of stigma. Car meet versus police, it's always going to be a battle. Yeah. But you yourself on George's channel as well, it's a great way to, to kind of merge the two. Yeah. And I like the way that it's being done. And ultimately, all we want to do is keep people safe. Yeah. You know, by doing the modifications on this car, we show you how to do it properly and legally. So then you don't get stopped by us. <laughs> you don't get tickets because, yep. you know, that's the whole thing of it. You don't get tickets yeah. if you do it right in the first place. Um, and then we can redeploy our resources where they're needed more yeah. rather than dealing with a car meet. Yeah, um, you know, that works for us. But, you know, like I say, ultimately, we want everyone to get home safe at the end of the night. Yeah. And, and that's what it's all about. It's been absolute carnage here, guys, honestly. The amount of people that have come to say hello, we are endlessly grateful. But it's about time we show you how great the car looks and it wouldn't have been possible without all of your help. So, Luke, show them how cool it looks. Guys, I've gone and done something that I shouldn't have done. As you can see right here is the standard exhaust system of our Mark III Focus RS police car. I think Owen's gonna have something to say when he gets a noise meter on it. Now, while Mike here at MG Performance fits the exhaust system on the back end of the Focus RS police car, we need to know whether this thing is gonna pass the testing regarding decibel limits here in the UK. What have you done to my car? We're not doing anything. Yeah, I'm not sure. Now I've had a bit of a strange phone call this morning from Martin telling me about some things on the car that I wasn't aware of. So it transpires that George and Mike have been doing a little bit of work on it that I wasn't aware of. And as luck would have it, I was in Plymouth today, so I popped into MJ Performance to see what's been going on. So let's go inside and see what they've been doing. All right, where's that car then? Let's have a look around here. Oh, there it is. So as you can see, Owen has somehow managed to find himself at MJ Performance. Oh, lucky. <laughs> you think we've done something to your car. Yeah. But you might notice that the standard one to the left of me is actually running. So why do you reckon that would be? Why would, why would the uh, Mark III Focus RS here be running? Well, the subtle change that I can see on our car is it now has carbon tips on it. We've gone for the Ascari carbon trims, which are pretty cool. We have actually, behind your back, Hoping that you don't hate me for this. Put a new exhaust system on this. Good news is, it's road legal. Right, bear with. It better be legal, otherwise you'll no, have know. a lot of work I taking know. it back off again, aren't you? <laughs> so you'll notice that it sounds great, but I would say that it's quiet enough that it stays within the noise limits. Well, my initial impression is that it's no louder than that car. Handily, in the car, I have the noise meter. So I'll tell you what, actually, just for the sake of it. argument, Go rev that one quickly, rev the one to the left, and I'll rev this one because I'm sure the viewer would like to know just how different they are. All right. So if you give that one a rev. And then we get the noise meter. Yep, we'll do that. Okay, now the new one. I would say they're fairly similar. It's not much different. So will this then improve performance then on the vehicle being the new system, what do you reckon? Absolutely. It, it will. Yeah, I mean, I assume it goes all the way through uh, with a sports cat and that as we talked about. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, yeah, we made sure that we got sports cat. improved performance, but it's not made it any louder than that one. Probably wondering how we use this equipment at the roadside, and it's really quite simple to set up. The microphone is 50 centimeters away from the exhaust, and it's at a 45 degree angle. Now, what you've got to remember is when these are tested in the factory, it's a very sterile environment, which it isn't here because we've got a different air temperature, we've got ambient noise going on, and that could cause, you know, a few decibels either side of what they were tested in the factory. But let's give it a go and see what we've got. So to do the test, what we need to do is slowly raise the revs up to 3,750. We hold it there for a second and then we let the revs drop down, uh, let it settle, and then the machine will give us a reading. So let's give it a go. What reading did it get there, Owen? Uh, give it a second. 
we got 80. You happy with that? Yep. Yeah, that's not too bad, is it? So, moment of truth then for our RS and its new system, up to 3750 and let's go. Putting a new exhaust on this car was nerve-wracking enough. Now let's see if it passes the noise test. So how does the system work then? Does it need to settle? Yeah, so we just wait for it to drop back down again. And then we click stop. We put that to delete because we're not keeping this record. 79.3. So how does that work then? So what is the uh, what is the need to know, so to speak? The need to know is that it's no louder than the stop system that we tested earlier. So although we put the, uh, the Scorpion system on, which is a much less restrictive system, it's got the sports cat, it still complies because it's no louder than the standard system would have been. So what you're saying ultimately is that we have now allowed more power capability to the car without actually going over the noise level? Absolutely. We've set the car up for the next set of performance modifications, so all the stuff that's coming, uh, but we've done the basics first, so we've done the exhaust system. And and all good to go. Now, what we're trying to show you by doing this project is that you can make performance enhancements to your cars, but no. do it legally. Now, what my model is holding here is the catalytic <laughs> converter that came out of this car. Now, what we've put in there is a 200 cell sports cat, and we're about to reverse it back into the MOT garage and so that we can show you that it passes the emissions test. What you can't do is remove a factory fitted catalytic converter and replace it with a decat. <laughs> because then you're gonna struggle with the emissions test and it will fail, okay? The other thing that my model is about to pick up <laughs> is the back box that we removed. Yeah, boy. What you can't do is remove all the silencers from the system and it's generally the back box that is the silencer. The middle box is a resonator and you can remove that because all that does is affect the tone of the system. It doesn't make it louder by removing that. So yes, you can remove the resonator, but no, you can't remove the silencer from the system, which is generally the back box. So please don't straight pipe your car. No, I actually made that mistake, didn't I? But you fixed it. You did, you made lots yep. of mistakes. And <laughs> yes, we've fixed pretty much all of them now. Yeah. You can put that down now. Let's reverse this car into the MOT station and get it emissions tested so we can show you how it passes. Do you think that's heavy? Hold it up for two and a half minutes. No, thank you. That's why I got you to do it. Yeah, <laughs> Now what you didn't see is that before we fitted all the new exhaust and the sports cat on the car, we did a full MOT on it and an emissions test which it passed with, with the standard system. Now it's got our new system on it, it's got a 200 cell sports cat and we've just redone the emissions test. Martin, are we all good? Did it pass? We're all good, it passed. Yeah! Excellent. Right, thank you so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe as always. Comment below, let us know what you think about our new system and our car in general. If you've got any ideas that we can use on the car, then we're always happy to listen. Now, if you've been following the series, you'd have seen that we've already done wheels, tires, suspension, and we've built the base on our car ready for the power upgrades that are going on now. Now, I've just turned up down here and the car is in um, a number of pieces, but I can see the work that's already been going on with the hoses and the header tank and all this kind of stuff. But what we We've also got is Steve from Revo who is going to talk to us all about the performance pack that we're going to be fitting on this car today. Good Hi morning. Steve, how are you doing? Hey, good, thank you. Steve, tell us about all this stuff that we're going to be putting on because behind us we've got the hoses and the hard pipe and the torque mount but up in the office there we've got our nicely new sprayed intercooler as well that goes on. So how does all this stuff work together? Yeah, like, like you say, it's all about being a package and working together. So we've got the front mount intercooler to keep things cool, keep the temperatures down on the car, throttle charge pipes again to help the flow with the airflow keeping things cool revo intake getting air into the engine so it's all all the package working together to keep the engine efficient it means we can then up the power from the vehicle and obviously make the most of it so mike give us a rundown of what you're planning on doing on this car so i've noticed that the is that the radiator that's not the, the radiator intercooler? yeah okay and that is the mount that it all sits in yeah is that correct? So this is the bracket that holds all the radiator and the aircon radiator and stuff in this is obviously pro alloy radiator okay so pro alloy are a massive company anyway in the industry yeah, huge. i've heard good things especially through martin and some of the amazing builds he's done yeah absolutely we use a lot of their products so as part of this project we're proud to be working alongside the p triple and we've got the smart mark along the uh, the side of the bonnet there that you can probably see steve how does this stuff work in relation to the emissions do we have to remove any of the emissions equipment in order to get that huge power increase in the car 
No, it all remains legal. Um, we removed the original downpipe with the restrictive catalytic converter into it. We replaced that with a sports cap, so therefore increasing the flow, being able to run more power on the engine, um, but at the same time, keeping all emissions regulations all remain in place. So MOT-wise, no, no issues at all there. Assuming that took ages, that's why we didn't want yeah, to you, watch all this. You wouldn't have wanted to sit there and watch that. <laughs> but I can see them all under there. Yeah, it's all in, done. There's a few clips to do. Obviously, we've got a few loose ends because the radiator isn't in yet, and so on and so forth in the header tank. But hose wise, they're in and they're done. I'm going to have fingers of steel after this. Yeah, you can go now. Yeah. So here is our shiny new intercooler with our Revo painting on the front. Now, what you were saying earlier that I didn't realise is that for some aftermarket intercoolers, people are actually cutting out the crash bar at the front, is that yeah. right? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. It's, it's crazy though it sounds, people are actually removing crash bars and trimming bits out, the original safety equipment, um, which is just absolutely ludicrous. And there's no need to do that. Yeah, guys, please do not cut out the crash bar. It's there for a reason. That's why it's called a crash bar. It needs to be there. It's structurally uh, part of the car and it is to help in the event of a collision. So please, do not cut out a crash bar just to fit an intercooler or just don't cut it out full stop. So Martin's quickly dragged me outside to show me something that's going on the RS police car. What have we got here, Martin? Right, George. So we've got a Forge uprated reset valve for the turbo. Okay, I've got one of those on my car. Is that the same one? Uh, similar, okay. but different application because yours is the five cylinder. This is a 2.3 EcoBoost. The standard one's plastic, standard spring. This one is nicely machined one piece okay. billet. Yep. Inside that goes on the there, turbo? Goes on the side of the turbo, okay. yeah. We already talked about the sound suppressor to suppress the sound, which is different again. So inside you've got the standard green spring. That's for a standard application if you stop power. Mm -hmm. And then we have a uh, yellow spring, which is the uprated one, which Big is the power. one. This is the one that you put in for if you want to, if you run in stage one, stage two, whatever. Okay. Yeah, because it's, um, you don't want um, any premature boost lost, etc. So, so you're going to get that fit to the RS police car and that's going to basically give it a little bit more longevity with boost. Yeah, it's just avoid the, it being brittle with the standard plastic one. Yeah. And just genuinely make it better Preventative as well. Preventative maintenance, isn't it? That's awesome. what it's all about. And I have this same one fitted to my RS. Nice, so of course you do. This is the overkill. I know it works. <laughs> MJRS. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for showing me. I really appreciate that. No problem. Right, Martin, obviously we've got the intercooler or the pipe work for the intercooler, the torque mount, but what's that? Right, so this is uh, what they call a sound suppressor from the turbo. Uh, the original one, you tend to get like a little horrible squeal uh, sometimes. Not all of them do it. This thing here just blanks it off. You swap it over and it contains the sound and you don't get it anymore. That looks absolutely amazing. Was it yourself or was it Martin that did the stenciling on uh, the Martin front of the Martin did the stenciling over the weekend. It does um, look good. Yeah. It's very nice it to Steve good. though, obviously he insisted actually fitting it. I just love the little accents. You've got the little Revo thing on the mount as well. I quite like it. Can't wait to see the front bumper on really and see what it all looks like when it's all complete. Now whilst we've been here today and I've been talking to Steve, we've uncovered um, something that we didn't know about this car that's actually quite interesting. Steve, do you want to tell us? Yeah, this was actually one of our um, Revo dealers' um, vehicles historically, and we actually used this as part of our development um, for the performance pack. So the performance pack that we're fitting on it today is the same performance pack that this car was used to develop? Yes, and the uh, overrun and the software, um, it was part of the development with our own car at head office, also one of our dealers' cars that we ran the performance pack and the overrun on, so yeah, very interestingly. Uh, so if it doesn't make the numbers, then there's uh, something seriously sure. wrong. <laughs> part of fitting this Revo performance pack to the Mark III Focus RS is of course, the main bit being the intercooler, which Mike and Steve have actually done off of camera that you guys have just seen. But the main bit that me and you have both done to our cars is induction kits and also crossover pipes, which in, in this instance is a lot nicer than anything I've ever had on mine. So this is the Revo genuine carbon fiber crossover, which is gonna look amazing in the engine bay of the RS. Yeah, it's pretty nice looking, isn't it? And hopefully with the cone filter on it as well, it's gonna sound pretty cool once it's all up and running. Yeah, so we do have the Revo cone filter as well, which is gonna be taking the space in the engine bay there. So that's gonna be giving us some nice whoosh noises, which also should add a little bit of power as well, which helps get the 440 PS that Steve said earlier, is that correct? Yeah, but the point of it is that it all works together, doesn't it, with, with everything else that's on yeah. it. So the exhaust system, the sports cat, 
you know, the induction kit, the maps, the intercooler, you know, everything that we put on this car now works together because we've got the new radiator and, and everything Some as more well. silicon as well, which is a nightmare to fit. If anyone watching has fitted silicon pipes before. Also, what I really like, which you're going to have to tell me about, Steve, is the fact that we now still have the standard airbox, yet an uprated induction kit. So yeah. what's that all about? Well, we found on the Focus that the standard airbox, cold airbox, actually flows very, very well. Um, so in this scenario, there's no point upgrading it and putting an open cone system on, which is then going to attract hot air from the engine bay. So it just makes sense really to utilise the stock airbox and then upgrade, obviously, the pipework direct to turbo. Um, so you've got the nice airflow there, but as I say, retaining the original airbox. So Steve, does it look as nice as you expected it to? It's looking good. So as long as it doesn't bother everyone. Yeah, as long fine. as everyone's happy being in the next video, you're, <laughs> you're all good. I mean, and myself, we're very lucky to not have to do much work on fitting this. I want to say a big respects to MJ Performance for doing it, but it, it looks so much better than we expected, didn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and the, all the hoses and that, the coolant hoses that they spent a lot of time fitting. It takes so much especially more work. Especially the ones yeah. that are right down there, which are apparently a right pain. So um, what we really like, obviously, is the carbon intake. Yep. which is really, really nice. They've actually utilized the original airbox. So they've kept, as you can see in here, if you point the camera down, you'll see that the Revo induction kit is within the original airbox, which is nice. So if you want to keep the, the OEM, is that the, is that the correct terminology? The OEM look, then yeah. that's exactly what's happened. Yeah. Um, the yellow pipes as well was a lot more work. Also the um, pro alloy coolant tank, is yeah. that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so. We've also got the, the new radiators as well. Yeah, we've got pro alloy radiator as well, which you can't see, but it's kind of as behind As you can see there. down here as well, yeah. yeah. Behind the blue lights. But no, it's slowly coming together, which is exactly what we wanted. Yeah, um, and uh, obviously the Revo software that's on it now as well for the uh, performance packs. So. But I've got to say in summary, this is so cool. So we've now got a leaflet, which basically talks about our work with car modifications and antisocial driving. I designed that. You did, yeah. you did, which is probably the first yeah. bit of design you've done for the whole not. Geez, yeah. I don't think it is. I think I've designed the whole car. No, no, I think I've done you pretty have, well. Yeah, no, I mean, in terms of like something that you can get your hands on, this is really, really nice. And hopefully we can have something similar to this in Fast Forward magazine one day. So that would be yeah. pretty cool. Do you want me to turn the lights on? Yeah, you go do that. So summarizing this video, if he turns the lights on, you'll be able to see where we've got to so far with the Mark III Focus RS. Looks pretty cool. But no, as you can see, I mean, it's 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 getting there slowly. It don't work. From the big brakes to the wrap to the stage two, it's slowly coming together. But thank you so much for watching this video. Um, it will always, work. Join us for the next episode, and we'll see you in the next <coughs> one. But also a big shout out to Angie Performance as well.